right, today's video, we're talking about electrical in this ambulance, which is substantial. So when we started this project almost three months ago, I knew absolutely nothing about electrical. So we knew we needed some help. And that's when we enlisted the help of Cedric and Jackie and Slater, uh, who are gonna, who have agreed to talk with you about some of the work that they've helped us do. And so now uh, I'll let them talk. How are you doing? My name is Cedric. I'm with Vision Mobile RV Repair. And I'm here to explain the battery inverter install that we did for uh, Anthony and Beth. So first, uh, what we did was to get an idea of what the customer wanted, what Anthony and Beth both wanted. And uh, once we got that information from them, uh, we were able to help guide them on the items that they needed uh, and start that process. So we did it in a matter of two phases. Uh, the first phase being the batteries and the inverter. And then the second phase, uh, which would be sometime down the road, would be the, the solar uh, panels and the solar controller. So as of right now, we're gonna start with the uh, phase one and what we did. What we have is our batteries. Uh, we have a battery isolator. Uh, the battery isolator, uh, basically when the vehicle is running and the engine is running on the vehicle, it picks up the alternator current and it then charges, sends a charge to the battery. When it's off, it stops that process and it goes into a standby mode. Uh, then you have your battery disconnect, which cuts power. In this case, we have the disconnect doing two operations. Uh, one is to supply power to the inverter, and then the other one is to supply power to the inside of the unit. Uh, we have a 400 amp uh, fuse going to the inverter, and then we have a 300 amp fuse going in to supply power to the coach. Here we have a shunt that is from Victron that will give you all your information uh, that you need as far as to monitor the system and everything from the inside of the unit, which at a later time when everything is finished inside, they're gonna run this wire through here inside the unit. You have your inverter, uh, Victron inverter, and then you have a Bluetooth uh, capable dongle, uh, which is a bus, a smart bus. Uh, to communicate the power where you can uh, monitor it from your cell phone or a computer with Bluetooth capabilities. For this particular setup, we decided to use the inverter as a pass-through. So what we decided to do in this particular setup is use the inverter as a pass-through. Um, the power that's coming in from your shore power will come directly to the inverter, from the inverter to the circuit breaker panel. We decided to do it this way because of the limited items that are needed to run different things, different components within the coach. And it makes it a little bit simpler than having a main panel and then going to a sub panel. Again, I'm Cedric with Vision Mobile RV Repair, and we're located out of Buckeye, Arizona, but we service the West Valley of Phoenix. Thank you. All right, thank you, Cedric and Vision Mobile RV Repair. Uh, for getting our foot in the door with the electrical on this project. Uh, we really needed you as a, as a partner to get us started, and it was, a, it was a great help having you as part of this project. So Cedric just talked about the auxiliary battery bank that he installed uh, and all of the Victron components and things like that. That was really half of this project. The other half of this project was reconciling the electrical that was already here, which is behind me. And as you can see, it's it's pretty advanced. Uh, Wheeled Coach, the company that bought this truck from Ford and outfitted it to be an ambulance, did an amazing job setting this up. Um, and if any of the employees of Wheeled Coach are watching this video, uh, I apologize for all of the rework that you see here that I'm about to talk about. As you can see, there's really a lot going on here. Um, and it was pretty difficult to try and understand upfront what was happening, but over time, um, I really just followed wires to where they went. I tested things with a voltmeter at different ends, so I tried switching things around, running tests um, as safely as I could, of course, in order to understand what was happening here. So this is somewhat of a technical description of what is happening. 
So. When I started this project, when we started this project, it was very difficult to find resources uh, online related to the specifics of this setup. Um, and even the resources I did find, um, they were for different vehicles, um, they didn't exactly apply here. So there was a lot of trial and error that happened. What I eventually found out is that ambulances are meant to go to the scene of an incident and they are meant to be left on once there. The truck sits there on idle and the two powerful alternators in the truck feed the power that is in the back here so that the EMTs can use the equipment that they need to help a patient. So really the electrical system back here is meant to be used when the truck is on and it's meant to be used with the truck batteries. So as part of the project of converting this as a place to live in, we needed an electrical system that could use the new uh, auxiliary batteries that Cedric helped us install. So that meant uh, rewiring this setup to run off those auxiliary batteries and to cut it off from the truck's batteries so that when we were doing things back here like cooking or using the lights, we weren't accidentally drawing the power from the truck's batteries and getting in a situation where we had a dead truck out in the middle of you know, nowhere in our campsite. So it's not obvious from just looking at this whole electrical setup here, but in following the wires, what I've discovered is that there are two sides to it. There are two sides to this board here, which contains a bunch of relays uh, that I'll talk about here in a second. There are two sides to these sets of buses here down here. That's Those are these bars here that receive power. And there are two sides uh, of power sources that come to these junctions here at the bottom. So one side, the left side, as you can see on this board up here, the left side with the lights on, is meant to be on all the time, receiving power all the time from the truck's batteries. That's why right now you see the truck is not on, but you can see that these relays are powered up and ready to go. The right side of this board is meant to be triggered when the truck is on. So this solenoid down here on the right detects an ignition signal from the truck, turns on this side of the board, which handles things like um, sirens, lights, stuff like that. And that's why it's not on right now. So once we discovered that the two sides of the board, the way this was laid out, that there are really two halves of all of this, it made reconfiguring it easier. Um, we were able to trace the different power sources for the two different halves back to where they went, which was actually in the cab of the truck, disconnect those, and then bring in our house batteries, our auxiliary batteries, to those junctions where those two different sources were. And so now everything is running off of our house batteries, um, and when we plug into shore power wherever we go, it's charging those house batteries instead of the truck batteries, and everything is completely separate. All right. So this is one of those junctions that I was talking about. It's a pretty much a power source for the rest of what's going on up here. So we have a line coming in from our house power that's coming in from this external compartment that Cedric showed you. It's going to this junction point right here, which is then branching out to all these different buses that you see up here. And each one of these buses, the power goes into the left side and then the right side is fused and then leads out to comes out to some different component here so what i mean by fused is that each one of these has either a 20 or 10 amp fuse behind it to protect the electrical system which is pretty great and it's a genius move from the wheeled coach people who built this ambulance and so then the bus receives power these wires go out either to a relay um, or directly to a component in order to feed it power. Um, for instance, this one here is running to our toilet exhaust fan that brings air outside the vehicle. The junction brings power to these different buses. The junction also brings power to this solenoid here. And this is what I talked about before that um, the solenoid detects a signal either from the truck's ignition or from a switch in order to give power to the rest of everything above here. So you can see it gives power to this bus, it gives power to this half of the board, and this solenoid in particular is run off of a master switch that's in the cab um, in order to give power to everything above here. This solenoid over here 
detects a signal from the truck's ignition and then gives power to the right side of this board here and this set of relays like I talked about. Now, the relays here, uh, what they do is they detect a signal from something else in the truck, either from a switch or from some automated system, and then they turn on something else. For instance, there is a relay that what it does is it detects a door being open, any door in the truck, and it turns on a flashing indicator light inside the cab that says, hey, you have a door open. It could be drawing power that you don't want to. So you'll see when that happens, when I open a door, another light comes on on this board saying, hey, send a signal to this other source, and then that light comes on somewhere else in the truck. And then there are also relays tied into switches like we have over here in the kitchen area and things like that. So you can see it's a really, great um, complex system that I wanted to make sure we incorporated in our living space. I didn't want to just strip all of this out because it could, be, it could be really useful. We could repurpose some of these wires for our lighting in different areas. Maybe we wanted a reading light in the bed area. Maybe we wanted to use this for some of our kitchen components. And we would have really lost a lot, I feel like, if we just removed all of this and started from scratch. Part of this process of um, exploring the electrical that was already in place was learning how I could simplify it. There are a ton of things that we don't need anymore. For instance, there was a, a suction pump in there and electrical related to that um, for procedures and things like that. We stripped that out in the wiring related to that. And for instance, there was an AC in the back that we're not gonna end up using. So there's a lot of wiring there to remove. And there were also a lot of little things here and there that um, I discovered. So for instance, in this electrical apartment, you'll notice this piece that's mounted to the top here that is receiving power um, through the house compartment. And what I discovered is that this is a charging station for a heavy duty fireman's uh, flashlight. So it's a really cool piece there, but we don't intend on buying that ridiculously heavy duty uh, fireman's flashlight. So I'm gonna end up removing that. And likewise, I found adapters for laptop battery charging stations. So ruggedized laptops that have little adapters that convert um, the power uh, to DC power have been running through the, um, the cab compartment, so I removed that. Just little things here and there that I want to take out and just simplify the entire system. So that's just a general overview of the electrical work we did for this project. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I know how frustrating it can be to not have an answer to something. So please reach out to us. I'd be happy to help and really just talk about this with some other human being. Uh, but I wanted to leave you with a few tips. If you're working on your own project, maybe your own ambulance conversion project or your own van build project. So the first tip I would leave you is to do this as safely as you can. So before messing with any wires, uh, I tested them with a voltmeter to see if they were receiving power. This is a pretty old school one, you'll see. Uh, but there are a lot newer ones that are kind of bigger and longer and more advanced. But regardless, if you don't know how to use a voltmeter, you can watch a two minute YouTube video and become an expert in it pretty quickly. And I definitely recommend doing that because you don't want to go removing wires that are receiving power and, and you not knowing about it. There are so many times I made assumptions in this truck that, oh, I definitely shut off the power for that wire and then realizing it was connected to maybe the truck battery or a different power source that I didn't even realize. So um, be as safe as you can, use a voltmeter, um, and also shut off the power upstream for wherever you're working. So what I mean by that is if, for instance, if I'm working on something that's connected to the house batteries, I will shut off the switch for the house batteries or I will remove um, you know, the leads for those house batteries to make sure that whatever I'm working on doesn't have power. Likewise, if I'm working on something that's connected to the truck uh, batteries, I will, rem I will shut off the power upstream, meaning I will either hit a switch that's connected to those truck batteries to kill the power, or I will disconnect the truck batteries altogether before working on that system. So be safe, that's my first tip. My second tip is, even though I didn't find a lot of resources, I did find a lot of enthusiastic, helpful people like me who would give advice. Um, some people who uh, I was following their ambulance conversion projects and I reached out to them with questions and they were just as happy and as excited as I was to offer their help. So shout out to 
uh, the Lost Box um, and the Cambulance Man for their help during this project that we were doing. And my last tip for you is to take your time with this. It can be, you can get really excited and it can be really tempting to just go in there and start stripping things out. Um, but what you might realize later is that you could use a lot of the, uh, the wires that you may be stripping out, even though, you know, for instance, you may have a switch that's related to something that you don't foresee using in the future, like, you know, sirens you could still use that wiring and that switch for something else that you have um, that you're working on. So take your time with it. And if things are confusing at first or you don't know what something does, just keep following the wires back and over time you'll get a better understanding of your system. It took me almost three months to get a full understanding of what we had here. So be patient, follow the wires, be safe, take your time and ask for help.